We've got a question for us uh, to look at here. Uh, we're given some information about an investment, uh, and we want to try to figure out what the interest earned is going to be after a certain amount of time. Now, just with any of these uh, interest investment problems, the first thing we need to do is figure out, is this a simple interest problem or is this a compound interest problem? And if you look closely here, you see that it specifically uses the word compound. The interest is compounded quarterly. These compound interest problems, problems where you should be using the compound interest formula, are almost always going to be explicit about it. You're going to see that word compounded in there, and that's going to be an immediate red flag. That's the formula I need to be using. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get that formula out. Uh, and I'm going to approach the same way we approached the last one we looked at, the way I look at all of these questions. I'm going to start by making a little table that lists all the variables in the formula. Then I'm going to go back to the question. I'm going to pull out the numbers, put them into my table. Hopefully there's going to be one value that doesn't have a number. That's the one we're going to find. All right, so uh, reading through the question, we're going to invest $1,350. That's P, the initial amount. Uh, the interest rate is 3.5%. I'm immediately going to turn that into a decimal, where we're never going to use the percentage value. So I'll put 0 0.035 in there for R. The interest is being compounded quarterly, and there are four quarters in a year. And here it gets a little unusual. We're given uh, the time frame in months, and we need the time frame to be in years. So you kind of need to be on the, on the lookout for that. Uh, but it's an easy conversion. Right? I'm going to take 18 months. I'm going to divide it by 12 months per year. We're going to get a year and a half. All right now, it's getting a little interesting because the missing variable, the variable they don't have a value for, is A. That's the final amount. But that's not what we were asked for. We were asked to find the interest. All right, And that's actually okay. I want you to hold on to that. We'll circle back to that once we've calculated this A value. All right, so if I put those numbers into the formula, uh, I get this kind of messy thing. And then if you go to your calculator and you enter these numbers very carefully, uh, remember we talked about this in the last example, I always do this in one big calculation. It's going to avoid any, any kind of rounding uh, issues. If you do that, you end up with $1,422.44 as the future value of the account. But we weren't asked for the future value. We were asked for the interest. All right, so how can we find that? Well, that future value, that A value we just found, it's made up of two parts. Money comes into this account in two ways and only two ways. There's the 1350 the P, that I put in, and there's the interest that the bank put in. So if we add up the principal and the interest, it has to equal that A value, the future value. All right, but I know P, that's 1350, and I know A, we just calculated, it's 1422.44. So if I saw this formula for I, I'm going to be home free. Subtract 1350 from both sides, and we get $72.44. That's going to be the interest earned on the investment. So if you'd like to see the full context, you can click on the upper link here below. That'll take you to the lecture on compound interest. And if you'd like to see another example, uh, you can click on the lower link. That'll take you to an example where we talk about how to find the principal that you need to invest to end up with a certain final amount. Of course, if you like this video, please don't forget to click on that like button down below as well.